we're going to move on to text effects. And so as part of text effects, I want to show you how to convert your text to be vector art. And so it, since it kind of bridges the two gaps between um, the vector art that we've been talking about for the first half of lecture and the text effects that we're going to talk about for the second half of lecture, um, I want to do it first. And so before we even get started on text effects, I'm going to jump back to our document in InDesign, Command A or Control A to select all and just delete everything that's on the workspace. And I'm going to type something. It doesn't matter what it is. Go ahead, make a text box, type something in it. I'm going to type, let's say, my name and change the typeface so that it's something big and fat and so you can see the anchor points that we're creating and then to convert your text to be a shape is super easy all you have to do is grab the box the text is in and grab that with your black mouse or your selection tool go to the type menu and choose create outlines and so as soon as you do that your big box that you made for your words will become smaller. It's the exact size of your box. And if you look really close, you can see they all have blue lines. If you switch to your white mouse or your direct selection tool, you can see that it has lots of anchor points. And so we can use our black mouse to make it bigger. I'm going to hold shift to make the whole thing bigger. And now we can switch to our white mouse and you can see all the different anchor points. And so if you're trying to create maybe a custom logo, um, you could use a typeface that maybe is a stock typeface, but you could personalize it. Maybe I want to dip in the top of the letter. So I grabbed it with my black mouse and I'm going to use my arrow keys. And I'm just going to nudge it down. And so maybe I'm going to create my own custom shape for my J. Or maybe, whoops, do as I say, not as I do. Maybe I'll come down to the I and I'll do the same thing because the I doesn't have a circle on the top. So maybe what I'll do is I'll create that little void like I did on the the J and then I'll come back with my own custom circle and I'll make my own, it's called a tittle, I'll make my own tittle for the dot on the I and I'll customize the shape that I'm creating. What's really cool about this is now it acts just like vector art and so you can modify it any way that you would want and so maybe, maybe my E, I really like the curved edges but I don't want to curve inside the middle of the E. And so if I switch to my, I'm going to bring my panel a little closer. So when I zoom in, you can see. If I grab my white mouse, I can see the anchor points that are creating this shape. And you can get rid of anchor points. So I just showed you something I haven't showed you yet. But instead of using the convert anchor point tool to get rid of a handlebar, like I'm going to do right here, um, you can grab the handle and if there is no handle, there is no curve. So if you drag it all the way into the anchor point and you drop it, it will disappear as well. Now, I could leave it like this if I want to, but if I wanted to make it so that um, I had a hard angle up at the top, I'd have to use my add anchor point tool, add an anchor point to the path, then use my white mouse and bring it back up into the corner. And now I can create an angle on the inside. I can then grab this guy here and we pull him down so he's creating the angle on the inside. If we zoom in you can see that this anchor point it actually still has a handlebar and so if I use the convert anchor point tool I can get rid of the handlebar and then I can go back to whoops figuring out where I want that to be and so now I have a well it's not lined up hang on that's close enough. Now I have a straight line on the inside of my shape but I have all the curves coming out if, if that's what I wanted to do. And so one way to create kind of a cool logo is to take like a stock typeface but make a slight personalization to it so that it's clear that you kind of made it your own. Let's jump back to the lecture and we'll talk about our learning objectives. And so we're going to talk about some additional text features that you can play around with in InDesign. And they are the idea of text wrapping or having a shape and you want the text to kind of go around the outside. Uh, we'll talk about settings that you would adjust with that, including what's called offset. And then we'll talk about the idea of ignoring text wrapping because sometimes you don't want the text to wrap around all of your shapes, just some of your shapes. And then I'll show you where to access the advanced type on a path settings. Um, and so you can expand your kind of vocabulary in terms of type on a path to being able to play around with that dialog box. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll show you where to access that if you want to start playing around with some advanced type on a path settings. 
And so text wrapping is the wrapping of text around a shape. And we're going to use what's called the text wrap panel. And you can see in my example here that I put my little chart that we're using from the previous video dead smack in the middle of the page. And it is unfortunate because by putting it in the middle of the page, I can't read what's behind it. Um, that is because all the shapes that you create by default, if you look at the text wrap panel, um, the, the text wrapping is set to the first setting, which is no text wrapping. Before we jump to InDesign, I want to basically make a list of steps or rules that you're going to follow when you're applying text wrapping. First, you apply text wrapping to the shape, not to the text. And so if I want the text to go around the little chart, I would select the chart and then choose a text wrapping option. You do not want to choose the two columns of text and say, wrap this text around the shape. It just doesn't work that way. What you would be doing is you would be saying that you want text to wrap around the outside of the text frame that has the text in it, which is just weird and, and confusing. The different types of text wrapping that are available to you, if you just click across the top of the text wrap panel, are no text wrapping. Um, then the second one is text wrapping around the bounding box. And so you can see that I have this custom shape that's kind of triangle in nature. But if I choose that second option, I basically get a rectangle. And that is the size of the bounding box. You can also choose to wrap it to the exact shape. And you can see in the third example here that that may not be so great because then the text goes inside the peaks of the mountain. And they're probably so small, maybe two or three letters wide, that you can't really read what the word is supposed to be. The last two options that are available to you are called jump options, and I'll show you when I jump over to InDesign uh, to demonstrate. And so let's go back to InDesign, and I'm going to do Command or Control-0 to zoom out, Command or Control-A to select all, and then I'm going to hit the delete key. I would like you to create a big text box that goes from margin to margin on whatever document you're working on, and I would like you to fill it with placeholder text, and you can find that under the type menu. All the way at the bottom, the second to last one, is fill with placeholder text. It just gives you some words. It's better than just kind of hitting the keyboard and hitting random characters. And then to match the example in the slideshow, I would like you to convert it to have two columns. And you can do that by going to the object menu, text frame options, and then you can change the text frame. Instead of having one column, you can choose two columns and select OK. And so now we have something similar to the example. I'm not going to take the time to make the mountain, so we'll just use a circle for now. And I would like you to make a circle and maybe fill it with a color so it doesn't look so kind of unhappy and lonely on the middle of the page. Okay, there we go. And so if this was part of our design element, maybe there was a quote inside here or there was a, a table or something inside or a picture. I would want to put it somewhere on my page, but I do not want to block the text out behind it because if someone's actually reading the article, they won't be able to read the whole thing. And so if we open the text wrap panel, which can be found under the window menu, uh, type in, oh, it's not in there anymore, uh, and then text wrap, you can use the text wrap panel to decide how the text on the outside will wrap around it. Remember, you do not want to apply it to the frame that has a text. You want to apply it to the frame that you want the text to wrap around. By default, everything will have no text wrapping. And so if you select the first option, you'll get a rectangle because it wraps to the bounding box. Notice how on the left side, it looks like there's more room than the right side. It has to do with the way the text is aligned. And so the left-hand side has a hard edge on text usually. If we change this to be justify alignment, you can see that it is equally spaced out on both the right and the left hand side of the circle. It just creates the illusion that there's more um, distance on the left when you have left alignment selected. The same thing happens on the top and the bottom. You see that you have extra space on the top and the bottom. You actually don't have extra space, but you have what are called line breaks. And so if we were to move this up and down, eventually it would eat into the next row and it would just move the whole row out of the way. And so the first second it moves it out of the way, it appears that there's like, let's say, a quarter inch of gap. But as you keep moving it, you get a smaller and smaller gap. And so it just happens to be wherever it lines up, um, allowing that distance to be more or less. The third option is the one that will allow you to wrap to the exact shape. And with a circle, that might be um, the best option. However, it's still touching on the outside, and we'll figure out how to fix that. 
The two options that I didn't demonstrate in the slideshow are, are called jump options. If you hover over the options here, you'll see, let me click on it. Oh, it doesn't want to highlight for me. Um, so you'll see that this one is what is called a, a line break jump. And so what happens is wherever you put this circle, if it's in a column, it will not allow any text on the right or left hand side. If it spans two columns, however, you get something like this. And so it's not really ideal for something that spans multiple columns. But if you have like a little illustration that's part of your, your article, you could put it anywhere inside here and it would not allow text on either side. The last option, it is a column break. And so if I select this option, what's going to happen is the text that's in the column that my artwork is in, it will stop above the artwork and it won't go below, like so. And so when we are taking a look at this, it's probably not best if the artwork is up real high. It doesn't make any sense. A line break would be more applicable because now I'm creating space. But when I get down to the bottom like this and I end up with like one or two rows, it's kind of awkward. And so instead of using a line break, you might want to use a column break um, or a, a text break here. And so no matter where I put this, it will not put text below it in the column I'm in. And so I can kind of just nudge this around at the bottom and decide where it's best. And I don't have to worry about ending up with like one line of text at the bottom beneath my circle. Some other settings that you should be aware of on the text wrap padding, um, panel are offset, or I guess really the only other setting that I really want you to know is offset. But in order to fully show you offset, I can't show you with a circle, and so I'm going to make a square, and so I can show you the difference between an, um, a four-sided shape and um, an irregular or a rounded shape. Let's give it a color. Order. Okay, so now I have two shapes. I have a square, and I'll wrap it to the shape anyway, and I have a circle. I'm going to go back to this guy. Uh, when I'm looking at the square, let's make it smaller so that you can see text on either side. When I'm looking at the square, um, well, if, I, if I apply text wrapping to the outside of my shape, it is going to wrap the text around the shape, but it's going to touch the edge. And when it's a square, it doesn't matter if I choose option two or option three, it does the same thing. If I want to add some breather room outside of the shape before the text is able to start, you can do that using what's called offset. It's a space between where your text, or I'm sorry, where your shape ends and where your text starts when you're using text wrapping. And so if I increase it on all sides, you can see that I'm creating this buffer around the outside of my shape where text can go. The benefit of this is that it doesn't have to be even on all sides. And so I could give this a little bit of breather room and maybe even nudge this up so it appears to be even on all um, on the right, left, and top. And then if I break the chain um, that says that all sides have to be the same, I can increase the bottom. Maybe I want to put uh, a description. Maybe it's a picture that's inside here and I want to put a description under it. And that allows me to uh, a breather area to put a little diagram description. Diagram six. This is what a zebra looks like or something like that for whatever you're working on. If you're using an irregular shape, you don't have the option to do all the different sides though. And so if we bring this up here, let's move this over. If we bring this up here and we do the same thing again, notice how on the text wrap panel where the offset is, I don't have four sides. I can just increase it equally around the whole shape of the circle. And it does the same thing. It puts a, a a buffer or some breather room between the edge of your shape and where your text would start on the outside.